Okay, let's see. For question number one, it says the sum of a number and its square is 56. The sum of a number and its square is 56. So, Will, how do I write that equation? Good job. No, no, listen now. You're good. Sum means to do what? So what are you adding? A number and its square. So how do I write a number and its square? And what am I doing with x and x squared? That's exactly correct. All right. So I want everybody to write down x plus x squared equals 56. All right. Now you see it is a quadratic. All right. Because it is a quadratic, you have to set it equal to zero. All right. When you set it equal to zero, you're going to write it in the proper order. So it's going to be x squared plus x minus 56 equals zero. Now what I want you to do is I want you to factor that quickly. Right now, factor it. I'm going to walk around and see how good you're doing. If you think you already got it, then read the second question. All right, let's go. Factor, factor. Come on, it should be done already. Hurry up. I didn't even say yesterday. Get your mouth shut. You're still running your mouth. Don't say anything. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you something. You guys think I'm kidding. I am not kidding. All right, I'm about ready to call them to tell them just come down here, but you guys are playing too much. Other people might put up with your playing around. I'm not. I'm not one of those people. All right, so if you can't get it together, just get out now and save yourself a lot of trouble. Now, I'm factoring x squared plus x minus 56. You should be able to quickly look at that and just say, Without much thought, it is x plus 8 and x minus 7. You should be able to tell me that. What? If you move it, because what if you ask for the answer, but aren't you moving the x? No, I'm not. Look, the x squared, all I did was do something like this. If I say 3 plus 2, that's the same as 2 plus 3. All I did was I switched these around. What I did do was I moved the 56 from the right side to the left side. That's what I did do. You with me on this or not? All right. So now, once I get to this step right here, we're saying x is equal to negative 8 or x is equal to 7. All right. Now, I'm going to try to convince you, all right, that we said there are two possibilities. All right. To show you that there are two possibilities, if I take negative 8 and I plug it back into the original equation, I'm going to get negative 8 plus negative 8 squared. What do you think that's equal to? 56. That is correct. If I put 7 plus 7 squared, guess what that is? That is exactly correct. 56. All right, so that's the way you can check. Exactly correct. Yeah, again, you'll see as we go through them, some of them are a little bit harder. Some of them are a little bit harder. All right? So it's not always an easy way to check. All right? But yes, most of the time you can check. So for example, take a look at number two. All right? Now, instead of saying I don't know, right, you see something up there similar to what we've done in the past. See if you can figure out what B is. All right? Do something. Don't just look at it. All right, you have to do something. Seems to be easy to teach. 
All right, walking around, some of you guys did a pretty good job. What you did was you said, well, we've been working on factoring, so there's a common what? 3x plus 5, a common 3x plus 5. So you factored that out, and you did 3x plus 5, and then uh, 2x plus 3 is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. All right. Now, they still don't look the same. So what do I have to do with this right here? Just multiply it out. Just multiply it out. Again, here's what I need from you guys. Well, please look up on the board because I still have kids today still can't mentally look at this and tell me what the answer is. So here we go. All right. The first thing is, what is 3x times 2x? 6x squared. 6x squared. Now, everybody, everybody should be able to say, here's a smiley face. How much is that? <laughs> 10x, and this is 9x. 9x. You can hold two numbers in your head. 10x plus 9x is? 19x. So now we have plus 19x. And now we have the last thing, positive 5 and positive 3, which is plus 15. Now I want you to write that out again. And then I want you to look at that. And I want everybody to tell me what A is. What does A equal? Six. Six. B is equal to? And C is equal to? That's all they're trying to tell you. A is the number in front of the square term. B is the number in front of the X. And C is referred to as the constant. All right? So the correct answer here is all they wanted to know what, what was B. And so we say B is equal to 19. B is equal to 19. All right. Now, number three. Here we go. For question number three, it says find two consecutive odd integers. Some of the kids last period forgot what consecutive odd means. Give me an example of consecutive odds. Yes. 53 and 55. That is correct. As long as you're saying two numbers that are consecutive, that means they're in a row. All right, and they both are odd. One and three, three and five, five and seven. All right, so that's what consecutive odd means. Now the question is, how do you get from the first odd to the second odd? What do you do? In other words, how did you get from 53 to 55? Added. You added two. All right, so here's the most important thing for this problem right here. What I want you to do is I want you to write down the first number. What do we want the first number to be? Do we have any idea? X, that's exactly correct. X. All right. Then we have a second number. And that second number is? No. X plus 2. X plus 2, that is correct. All right, X plus 2. And now we want to do what? Multiply them together. So I have. How do I represent multiplying them together? X, parentheses, X plus 2, equals 143. That's perfect. All right? Now your job is to solve that real quick. All right? Now your job is to solve that real quick. Oh, yeah, let's see where you're at. Hmm. Let's see what the answer is. 
because I'm talking to this with me. <clears throat> Learn it with me. Let's try to go back to 126. What? 11 and what? 11 and 13. Brilliant. 11 and 4. Distribute that out. You're supposed to distribute that out. Now, when we multiply, I get. <coughs> x squared plus 2x minus 143 equals 0. And now, I agree, 11 and 13 is kind of a pain. All right, that's kind of hard to see. All right, that's just something you got to figure out. You know, it can't be too big because if you do 9 times 11, it's 99, right? So you're close, right? So here we go. So it does factor to what? What does it factor to? X minus 11. X minus 11 and X plus 13. So X is equal to 11. X is equal to what? Negative 13. Thank you. Listen. Come on, man. I'm worried about you. You hear me? I, 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 we can't continue. <coughs> All right. You got to get to work. Wake up. Come on. Three more months to try to get something in your brain. <coughs> All right. Now, here's what some of the kids thought earlier. So I want you to pay attention. Listen to me. One answer is X equals 11. So if X equals 11, the other number would be what? Come on, would be 13. So your choices are this. I want you to write this down. 11, 13. That is one set of answers. Then you have what? You have this guy right here is the other possibility. That's the first number, though. So then you're going to write down what? Negative 13. Comma what? Comma negative, negative, ele negative 11. <clears throat> Those are both sets of numbers. Now think of what about, I'm trying to tell you. 11 times 13 is what? 143. And then what else? Negative 13 times negative 11 is what? 143 also. Is everybody with me on that? All right. So again, there are two sets of numbers that satisfy this condition. 11 and 13 and negative 13 and negative 11. Any questions? All right. Making yourself notes here. All right. If you're not sure about something. All right. Here we go. Number four. Very similar. All right. Let's go. Same problem as one and earlier. But let's see if you can do a better job. Different technique, but same process. Let's go. Somebody tell me, is it necessary for the first set of parentheses, really? No. The second set of parentheses is necessary. Yes, because we have to do what? Distribute A. Now, Sebastian. Can you keep your mouth quiet? You see what I'm saying? Even if I'm wrong, you can just still just be quiet. Right, if somebody says something and they say your name, you don't have to get all like dramatic. All right, just be quiet. I'd like to have a good class. Not being distracted by you guys clowning around. What? Also, because the first variable is a negative, you can just do the negative. This? Yeah. Come on now. Combine the terms and then tell me what B is. Oh, 
Just combining terms, that's all you're doing. What are you doing? Let me see. What? There's no even square there. What are you talking about? What's the square on the top number two? Okay, here we go. Yeah, and same thing, Connor. You are to ignore everything in the back. Nothing. They're saying nothing back there. They're never talking about you. So here we go. You should have on your paper negative 3x squared, right, Ellis? Negative 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 2. And now we're just doing what? Combining terms. When we combine terms, you should be able to tell me that's negative 5x squared plus 9x. And then what happens to the constants? They cancel. So now they could ask you lots of things. They could ask you for A. They could ask for B. They could ask for C. They could ask you to add them together. All kinds of things. But right now they're just asking you for B. So B is what? B is 9. That is simple. Simple. That is on a high school, college entrance exam. To me, I don't understand it. Simple. Distributing combined numbers. That's all we're doing. It looks complicated. It's simple. You got it? I'm walking around in a minute. You better be ready. All right. Now, number five. What? Why what? B is 9 because B is the number in front of the X term. What? It's the same as the other problem. B is the number in front of the X. All right? Now, number five. The first thing I want everybody to do is I want you to write down the equation of the first sentence here. Write down the equation of the first sentence. That's not a five centimeter and a period, by the way. Somebody in the last class thought it was an end of the sentence period. It's not. It's centimeters. All right? Uh, listen, stay focused. Write the equation for question number five, the first sentence. And if you've got that, then you can continue reading and try to solve the problem. But most of my kids couldn't remember from the first chapter when we said write the expression. They couldn't write the expression today because they forgot what they learned six months ago. Shh. Good. Perfect. <clears throat> quiet. Quiet. Come on. Concentrate. Did you write the first step like I said? I said write the equation. Write the equation. <clears throat> No, that's not what that said. Length is L equals. What does L equal? Come on now. What does L equal? Show me. Wow, very good. But you didn't put L equals. Put L equals and you're in good shape. What does L equal? <laughs> no, it doesn't say five centimeters. It says five centimeters less than twice the width. You're supposed to be able to write that. Remember when we said more than or less than? You didn't even see the twice in here, Ellis. It says twice. So stop. Stay out of his ear. What is the equation for length? U. L equals 5. Minus 2w. That's what someone said last year. I taught you this. How do I represent 5 less than? What is it? I know, but how do I represent 5 less than? Minus 5. 
You're supposed to remember five less than means minus five. Do you hear me? So it's not five minus two W, but what? It's supposed to be two W minus five. Now, if you made a mistake, I'm great with that. Now fix it. Make yourself a note. <coughs> Underline less than. All right, less than. Switch the order. All right, if you made a mistake on that, correct it. Now it says the length is 2w minus 5. All right, <coughs> now the next step is they say that the area of the rectangle is 88 square centimeters. So what's the formula for area of a rectangle? Tell me. Length times width. So everybody should put down on their paper, area equals length times width. Come on, we got this. Now, did they tell us what the area was? Yes. yes. So I can replace A with what? 88 is equal to L times W. Now what can I do? Yes. Yes. Now we're doing a substitution. We're only allowed to do substitutions for lines. Now we can do them to solve quadratics. So this L, so 88 is equal to 2W minus 5 times W. That is correct. You still with me, Connor? It's like three problems in a row, right? All right, let's try to make a record today. Sure. What? No, you're not talking to anyone back there. Now, distribute the W. When I distribute the W, what do I get? Shh. Yes, that is correct. And now we have a quadratic. And every quadratic has to be set equal to what? Yeah. Zero. So now I'm going to throw the 88 on the right side or subtract 88. So I want everybody to write down 2 W squared minus 5 W minus 88 <coughs> equals zero. Now, this one's kind of tricky to factor, so I'm going to walk around the room. I want you to factor it. If you're done with the factoring, solve it. Tell me what it is. And then if you think you're all good, go to question number six while I'm walking around the room. Come on, let's see you factor faster. Let's go. Come on, hurry it up. Where are you at? Are you trying to factor? Or are you so you're not writing that. Write it like I'm doing. Two w squared minus five w minus eighty eight. Then put your two sets of parentheses up and factor that. Where are you at? You're trying. Good. Where are you at on your factor? Faster, come on. Don't get involved up here. <clears throat> Still pretty good. Just keep your mouth shut when I say something dumb. You, stop laughing. Nothing to laugh about. You get a good grade. Good start. What factors of 88 are probably what? 8 and 11. Try 8 and 11. See what happens. Wow. That's what I'm saying. Get with it, and you'll be good. Now, the 8 cannot go there. The reason why the 8 can't go there is because they're common factors at 2. You understand what I'm saying or not? So throw the 8 over there, the 11 over there. Do your smiley face and see what happens. Where are you at? Ellis, come on. What are you doing? Factors of 88. Shh. <coughs> smiley face and see what happens. No. <coughs> Here we go. Now again, 4, 2w squared. It has to be 2w and w. Connor, right? Then you said 8 and 11. The 8 can't go with the 2. Do you understand why? So the 8 goes on the other side. And 11 over here. Now we do our smiley face. How much is that? 11. And how much is that, Connor? 16. You understand how to do that? All right, now. How do I make a negative 5? 
That is exactly correct. How about that? All that screaming is for good. Okay. Now set the factors equal to zero and solve it out. So over here we should be able to say W equals what? Negative 11 over 2 or W equals 8. Is it possible for a link to be negative? Yes. No. Come on. Just think a little bit. Draw a negative 3 inches. Brilliant. Here we go. There we go. Hey, listen. Negative. I'm not saying that negative can't ever be a le an answer. I'm saying when you're measuring a rectangle, how are you going to draw it negative 11? It can't be a negative number. You can't draw negative 11 inches. You can't draw negative 5 inches. You understand what I'm saying? No negatives. Distance can't be negative. All right? So that's called an extraneous solution. So you put an X over it. What? How, how is that spelled for special education? E X T R A N E O U S. Extraneous solution. The only possible answer is what? W equals 8. Now that doesn't answer the question because it says what's the. Listen. Same with you. Keep your upfront. I you're, continue, okay? Don't stir it. W equals eight. Now it says find the dimension. So I need not only the width, I need the what? The length. So if W is eight, what is the length? Eleven. Thank you. Now one way to do that is just say well eighty-eight divided by eight is eleven, or you can plug eight in for W. L is equal to 2 times 8 minus 5, so the length is equal to what? 11. So your answer is 8 centimeters by 11 centimeters. That is your answer. That's your answer. <sighs> Nothing's back there. It's like a blank wall back there. And you hear nothing, you see nothing. The only thing you're hearing and seeing is the things that I'm projecting to you. That's it. Learn that. Your life will change. It doesn't matter what other people say or do. Right here, number six. Think about number six. Now, before you just start thinking about the quickest way to do it, read the problem first and see if your eyes focus on something that might make it easier for you. All right, I'm going to walk around the room and see what you got for an answer. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, chop, chop, faster. Think about it first. Don't just do something. Think before you work. That'll save you a lot of time. <coughs> okay, let's take a look. Here we go. So, again, what I'm really trying to convince you guys is when you take a standardized test, listen, when you take a standardized test, sometimes if you think before you start working, it makes the problem actually easier. So what I'm trying to convince you of is to everybody look at this, what I'm highlighting. The negative 2y and the positive 2y. What happens to that? They cancel out. That's what happens. They cancel out. All right? And because they cancel out, the negative 2y and the 2y cancel out, right? You're now left with 6x and 12x. And that's what? What's 6x and 12x? 
Nope. Oh, no. Six X and twelve X. I'm just asking you a simple question. Eighteen X. Thank you very much. All right. So now I have one half y squared times eighteen X. All right. That's what you should have on your paper right off the bat. And of course, now we can say half of eighteen. What's half of eighteen? Nine. Nine. And then you All right. Yeah, so now it's just 9xy squared. The correct answer was A. Nicole, are you making up a test after school? I don't know. Yes, you're making up a test. No, you're not. I'll have it. Sebastian, come sit up here. All right, just just sit up here. This is like your permanent seat from now on. Julian, you slide yours all the way over in that corner, right over there, right here. It's good, right? What is that? Yeah, that's okay. All right, easy. I don't have to see you. All right. Hey, listen. You keep your mouth shut. Don't stir the pot. That's the problem. It's embarrassing. Number seven. Here we go. On this one. Should be very simple. Should be very simple. Now, again, I want everybody to just be able to say, well, this has to be the answer. All right. T has to equal two. This is what I want. All right. T equals two. That is the answer. All right. Now, hold up, girls. Same thing. I'm talking. All right. If T equals two, I would want everybody just to say that is the answer. All right. But we are going to do the math. All right. So when we do the math, all right, I still need you to look at T squared minus four. And tells me what tell me what that factors to. What does that factor to? Um, so it's like That's exactly right. T plus two and T minus two equals zero. You know what? You you after this, we're marching up to the office. All right, then we're gonna have a conversation with them, and then we're again gonna talk to your parents about how you can't just control yourself. You're not doing it in here. I told you. I warned you. So now we're going to go upstairs and we're going to talk, the three of us, about playing around in class. And when I tell you, knock it off, that's what I mean. Because you know what? I could probably be done with the lesson if I wasn't dealing with you three. And you think I'm putting up with it, don't you? Guess what? I'm not. And then I want, when you go home, I'm going to tell your parents to watch the video of what I have to put up with because you can't control yourself. And someone else might get called too, all right? I'm not putting up with it. I'm trying to teach. And there's people in here who want to learn. You might not want to learn. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. You can sit in the office while we're having math. That's the way it's going to be. Every day that you walk in here and disrupt my class, you're immediately getting taken out. You understand? You understand? I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening to your shenanigans. I'm not listening to your funny noises. I'm not listening to you up and down, up and down. I'm not doing that. You can control your laughter, and I'm going to prove to you you can. Because you're not doing that in my room. So now, I'm here where we're factoring t plus 2 and t minus 2. This is how I want it. All right, so then you would set it to be equal to 0. So you would say t is equal to 2 and t is equal to negative 2. Now, what's the problem with t equals negative 2? It's not greater than 0. It's not greater than zero. That is exactly correct. So that, again, is called an extraneous solution. So that's marked out. So the only answer is t equals 2. Extraneous just means that you've done all the math properly, 
it just doesn't satisfy the condition of the equation because it's saying here that what? T has to be what? Greater than zero. Oh, so that means if you do it like you said T like minus T plus two equals zero and then you subtract one, but you can't do the zero. That's exactly what extraneous means because this part doesn't satisfy this condition right here. Doesn't satisfy. Just put your hand down. We're going to figure it all out at the end of the class. That's it. All right. Then I'll start talking to you again. All right. That's why you're there. All right. Keeping you quiet. All right. Number eight. Here we go. Now, everybody should be able to do this. 3x plus 7 squared. All right. So go ahead. Do that. Take about 15 seconds. If you want to be right, you should probably take 30 seconds. Most people get this wrong, all right? They always make a careless mistake, all right? So let's try number eight. <clears throat> Come on, Connor. You got to work it out, man. Sitting there daydreaming again, all right? Let's go. Chop, chop. No mumbling under your breath at me either. All right, most people put what here as an answer? C. Yes, I'm glad. If you said C, you know that that's not correct. All right, that's what most people put. Everybody puts C down. All right, and the reason why they put C down is because they take the obvious choice and say 3x squared is 9x squared, 7 squared is 49, and they'll always put the wrong answer on this one before the correct answer. All right, so now let me explain to you. Look up one more time real quick. Is 2 plus 3 squared the same as 2 squared plus 3 squared? Yes or no? No. Obviously it's not. So when you square a binomial, you always get a what? A trinomial. So right off the bat, you should have been able to say, well, I know it's not A, B, and C. All right? When you square a binomial, you'll get a trinomial. All right? Now, when I look at 3x plus 7 times 3x plus 7, when I multiply that out, I end up with 9x squared. And then the 7 times 7 is the what? 49. Now, what I'm trying to remind you of is that we always have little smiley faces that you should be able to do in your head now. That's 21x and 21x, which makes what? Positive 42x. That is correct. All right. You have to know how to do that. It's on all standardized tests. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to show you a quick way to do this. So if, like, the equation for part is going to be squared into something like multiplying the equation together. Now, That's exactly right. right. But now I'm going to show you a pattern so you can get them always right. So look up here so I can try to teach you the pattern. Does everybody understand now? Look, please. Look right here. Does everybody see the middle term is 21? And if, if you're squaring it, the middle term will always be what? Will always be the same. So the pattern is this. When you're doing 3x plus 7 squared, look how easy the pattern is. The first thing you do is you square this, which we know as 9x squared. Now listen to the middle term, please. The middle term is always 3x times positive 7, which is... 21x, and then I always tell kids, remember, just look at the exponent. That'll tell you how many times you got to multiply. So just multiplying 3x <coughs> times 7 times 2. And 3x times 7 times 2 is what? That's where you're getting the 42x. And then 7 squared is what? 49. 49. There you have it. That's why the correct answer is E. That's why the correct answer is E. All right, now let's quickly move on because I think we're running out of time. All right, question number nine. All right, now I need someone to remind me what does f of x mean right here? Nope, f of x means another, a, yes, f stands for function. No, 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 that's if we're doing inverse. That's not bad, that's a while ago. But f of x is the same as what letter? Nope. X is over here. 
Y. Yes, f of x. If you forgot that, I need you to write down f of x equals y. Or f of x means the same as y. Is that us? Yeah, guys, uh, again, you three are coming with me. All right, we're, we're way too, way behind. You guys cut me off like 10 minutes today. All right, so here we go, guys.